Okay, so just wanted to showcase a real analysis assignment that I got today. Um, four questions, uh, six points each, 24 uh, four points in total then. Um, so yeah, just a bit of background, I'm a first year. So yeah, this is like my first ever real look at real analysis, I guess. Um, of course, there are. I've heard of these terms before, but having them defined like um, the way they've been defined to me recently or in this past academic year has been the first. Um, so yeah, this is the second assignment I've ever gotten for this module. Second, um, first one I got wasn't great. Um, my score wasn't the best. So yeah, I started like you know I started uh, properly and um, paying attention in lectures, going to all the tutorials. And this one does seem a little bit better than the last one. Um, I'll probably show off the last one I did in a, another video if I get around to it. But let's just take a look at uh, these questions here. So first question is just uh, determining whether these um, converge. So yeah, whether they conver converge or diverge. Um, my first thought when I saw this uh, uh, was just um, it seems somewhat similar to a harmonic series but I'm not entirely sure um, I kind of see the um, uh, 3 to the k at the denominator there and then um, yeah but yeah that's um, what my that this one here I'm honestly not sure I'm going to approach that one I have a couple of ideas but nothing too much number two I'm very confident with um, so using the definition, which I'm guessing it means the epsilon delta definition, show that the limit of x squared is 4 as x tends to 2. Then showing that f is continuous at 2. Not too bad. Question 3 here. Suppose that f maps real numbers to real numbers and it's a function. Suppose that f dash of 0 equals 1. Determine that limit there. Yeah, when I first looked at this, I thought to myself, I don't exactly know how to... I looked at it for a good five minutes, and I thought to myself, I don't really know where to start. I mean, it does look similar to the differentiation definition, kind of, but that's just a hunt, that's just a guess, really. So I'm not sure if that's going to help at all. Um, but yeah, to me, that's the hardest question in all of this. And this one doesn't seem too bad. Um, so f we have two functions f and g they're split into, they're both split into two parts for when x is positive and when x is zero and negative proving that they're both continuous and seeing if they're differentiable at zero we had a question somewhat similar to this um in a tutorial in a problem sheet that we went through today even um so i'm thinking i might take a similar approach to that um only difference is um it doesn't uh, in the problem sheet, it only looked at x is greater than 0, I believe, because the function was, um, uh, I believe the function was f of x is equal to root x, and of course, um, we haven't looked at complex numbers just yet, so they just restricted it to greater than 0. Um, but I'm thinking that I can take a similar approach for the negative side as well, since it's not a square root. Then g of x, I might do the same thing again, I'm thinking. Um, now, are they differentiable at zero? I'm thinking of using the definition of um, of it of something being differentiable differentiable at a point. That was my thought on it was here. Um, to look at everything I've thought of for this assignment so far, here it is. Uh, so yeah, I was thinking for question one, ratio test. Um, in case it is called something else. Uh, oh, in case you know it by another name, it's basically where if the ratio of subsequent subsequent terms, so um, let's say here, let's say this is a n, if a n plus 1 over a n, the limit of that as n tends to infinity, um, if, the lim if that limit is less than 1, then a of n tends to 0, so it converges. I'm thinking of maybe trying that for these, but um, I had a friend of mine, but a friend of mine said they tried it, and she said that she couldn't really simplify it. Um, I don't know if she said she tried both, but she tried one of them, but she didn't say which one. And um, comparison test. 
I mean, case you know it by another name is where, basically, if I remember this correctly, um, if you get a sequence where each term, if you get a smaller sequence, and that um, diverges, then the original sequence that you're looking at um, also diverges. However, it, it's also for convergence as well. If um, a bigger sequence uh, converges, then a then the original sequence also converges. So if the new sequence you find is smaller is smaller than the one you're looking at and it diverges, the original one diverges, if the bigger one you're looking at, if the bigger one you made or found um, converges and the original one also converges. I'm going to try to use those two but I have very little experience using comparison. I've used ratio a little bit and I'm kind of comfortable with that but this algebra looks like it could get a little bit annoying but we'll see. I mean as I said number two epsilon delta definition um so i'm going to use that one del the epsilon delta definition for this first part here and then for the deduce that f is continuous at two i'm just going to show that when you approach um the x when you use when you look at when you approach x equals two from both sides on the x squared graph um the limit is four and then f of two obviously two squared is four so that's my plan for that this one here, yeah, again, um, I know that if something is differentiable at a point, it's also continuous at that point, but I know that the reverse isn't true, so, but the reverse isn't true, but, um, yeah, that might take me a little longer to work through. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, this, right, so sheet 7 is the thing I was talking about, where it looks similar to a question I saw on a sheet I did today, even. Um... Mm -hmm. To prove that they're continuous, uh, we did use this definition here. I'm pretty sure, was it? Not definition, this corollary here. I think, um, basically we said that, uh, instead of using A, we used to C, and then um, proved that, oh, what was it again? I want to say that um, we proved that when C is a real number, um, uh, it is, we found delta such that it's continuous or something like that. I can't exactly remember. I'll have to go back over what I wrote there. Then for this part, I'm thinking of just straight up using the definition of differentiability of something being differentiable. But I know that's I'm thinking this um, uh, open interval part is kind of throwing me off. I'm thinking if I just say let a be I don't know um, minus a quarter and b be a quarter, like I just make an interval of a clo an open interval of a minus a quarter to a quarter, that should make it okay. Mm. But yeah, um, yeah, that's the that's all I've got so far. That's the assignment. Um, honestly, it's not looking too bad. I thought it'd be worse to be fair, but. Yeah, uh, that's all really. Uh, have a nice day.